don't worry, I meant to do that. Yeah. Uh, so preparing for this, guys, was quite difficult because you see, I'm on the uh, autism spectrum, and although I'm good with routines, I'm not usually the one to organise them. <laughs> now, as you can tell, I wear glasses. Obviously, it didn't work there, did it? Uh, but this often brought about lots of uh, ridicule when I was a child. I used to get called such horrible names, four eyes, nerd, specky twats. Thinking about it, my parents could be quite cruel at times. <laughs> All right. Uh, my mother was the inspiration for most of my comedy. She used to do the most strangest things. Did anyone else's mom turn the radio down when they wanted to see where they were going? <laughs> yeah? I'm still trying to work out why she did it in the house. <laughs> yeah. But my mum was always late for everything. I remember sitting outside school waiting. Even the head teacher had gone home. I think back now, maybe she just didn't like me. Aww. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other day she uh, gave me a call and uh, she said, I can't find my mobile phone. I'm looking for it everywhere. And I looked at my phone with a name there and I was like, Mum, how are you ringing me? Yeah. Unfortunately, though, my mum couldn't be with us tonight. Don't worry, she's not dead, she's just late. <laughs> uh, I'm one of four children, I have a twin. Now, often people find it difficult to tell the difference between the two of us. It's easy, you'll see, I'll explain it. Right, I'm good looking, I'm funny, and I'm charming. He's called Robert. <laughs> He's a practicing lawyer. I'm not entirely sure when he gets to be the real thing he hasn't said. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, yeah. uh, at school, we often found ourselves in lots and lots of trouble. And to get away with it, we used to swap jumpers so they wouldn't know it was who. I asked my mother what was the funniest thing she ever remembered about school. And she told me this. So one day, uh, we decided, me and Robert, that we'd had enough of lunch break. Now, to get the class in, you used to press an electric bell and one would go around with a handbell. So this is exactly what we did. We rang in. All the school lined up, all the teachers and everything, they went into class. It wasn't until later on the afternoon when the head teacher was speaking to another teacher and questioned why everyone had gone in early. And they said it was the Perry Warsock twins. Now, you know you're good when you get your own name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yes, you see, we love school, they hate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the last time I saw Robert was uh, he organised my stag do when I got married. Yeah, no, I'm separated now. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get married, by the way. I got married to somebody else. Uh, yeah. It was decided that we'd go to Amsterdam. Fantastic. I'd done my research. There was the Anne Frank Museum. There was art galleries. There was even a pub made of ice. Did I see any of that? No. We arrived at uh, to St Pancras Station, and you'll know it goes on the Eurostar, and I thought, fantastic. First class accommodation, breakfast, and everything. And then they dropped the bombshell. I'd be going by coach. <laughs> 14 hours sat next to a sweaty Liverpudlian guy, who at one point fell asleep and dribbled all down my shoulder. Yeah. I arrived at 6 o'clock in the morning, and nothing was open. Not even McDonald's. No, no. And uh, they eventually turned up about 10 o'clock and they decided we'd go for coffee. I thought, brilliant, I can do with this after 14 hours on a coach. If you've never been to Amsterdam, though, you'll know that a coffee shop doesn't just sell coffee. <laughs> it smells like a teenager's bedroom in there, I'll be honest with you. They spent all day in there and then decided they'd had enough. I wanted to go back to the hotel. Great. So. I was like, great, are we going back to the same one? No? Mine was miles outside of Amsterdam. And when I got there, it turned out they'd somehow forgotten to pay for it. So yeah, 100 euros out of pocket. And then the daunting of Hasso to get in the coach back the next day. To top it off, the coach actually broke down outside of Calais. Yeah, we were sat next to a rather dingy, fallen down industrial estate. Absolutely, you are sick. For 18 hours. Yeah, and then we had this prospect for another 14 hours on the coach. And it was that point I came to realise that I was so glad that they paid for the upgrade for a window seat. <laughs> I've been James. Thank you, guys.
Let's hear for James! Johnny Watson, there we go. Yes, run, run for your life. Yes, get out. Uh, that's our first half, guys. Didn't they do well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to take a short break now so you can go get some drinks. But come back here in about 15 minutes time for the second half. Give a big round of applause for the all, all the extras who are in the first half, guys. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.